To my back is Gannett Hall. This was built a number of years ago, obviously from donations from the Gannett organization, which is the world's largest uh, newspaper organization. And the main thing we have here is a large auditorium, which is acoustically one of the best we have on the campus. And uh, also in this building, we have offices plus the operation of the broadcasting de uh, department of the School of Journalism. And uh, this represents a trend in this school of having alumni or famous newspaper organizations donate to our building program and to our academic program, which we consider a recognition of the outstanding tradition that were established here in 1908. We're now coming up on Switzerland Hall, which was the second home of the School of Journalism. The initial classes were conducted in Jesse Hall, which we'll visit uh, shortly. But Switzerland Hall was appropriately named for our journalism students, one might say, because Mr. Switzerland began his career uh, in newspaper work, became widely famous in the state of Missouri for his newspapers in Columbia. Uh, later on, he was, uh, uh, wrote the best history of Boone County we've ever had, and he became an outstanding citizen. So his association with journalism made it uh, sort of at home for these pioneer journalism students, and they remained in this building until 1920, when the uh, building we just finished uh, was built. In back of me, you see the famous columns. These columns came from the original academic hall at the University of Missouri, which burned in 1892. There was a debate that didn't go on too long as to whether we should tear down the columns as well and build a completely new building there. But uh, thank goodness better judgment prevailed and we retained these columns. There are many people who believe that probably this is the most photographic, uh, most uh, photographed place in the state of Missouri. When you think of every graduate who's come here, adding all those family pictures, all the alumni coming back, all the tourists going through the state, and uh, all of the freshmen coming in to take a picture to send back to their parents, there's no doubt about that. Uh, in back of that is the replacement for the original academic hall, which is now named Jesse Hall, honor one of our pioneer presidents. And it was in Jesse Hall in 1908 when Walter Williams held, conducted the first classes in the School of Journalism. They stayed there a number of years prior to moving to Switzerland Hall, as we've noted, and then in 1920, moving over to uh, Neff Hall. It seems appropriate to anybody interested in journalism, and especially interested in newspapers, would recognize this individual I'm sitting next to is Thomas Jefferson, who gave us that great First Amendment in the Constitution, guaranteeing us freedom of the press. Now, the University of Missouri has been honored in many ways in association with Jefferson. Uh, a few feet away from me, is the original tombstone over Jefferson's grave in Virginia. This was given to the university because it was the first land-grant university in the Louisiana Purchase, which Jefferson arranged. This particular monument was donated to the university by prominent alumni who contributed extra money to make this a permanent uh, part of the campus. And it, too, like the columns, has become one of the favorite uh, photographic centers on any tour of the University of Missouri in Columbia. So I think that uh, we pay our respects to Thomas Jefferson. We thank him for his interest in newspapers. We thank him for encouraging people to read newspapers. And above all, we thank him for his contribution to freedom of the press, an issue that we are still fighting to maintain as Jefferson would have us to have many, many years ago. We have here some tall trees that were planted in 1958-59, uh, 
when the School of Journalism celebrated its 50th anniversary. Each tree represented a student organization. One of them was the Honor Society, Kappa Tau Alpha, and one of them was Sigma Delta Chi, the News, and groups like that. And uh, it was symbolic. Uh, the hopeful idea in those days was that this plot of land would someday house a Freedom of Information building. Uh, unfortunately, we were never able to get enough money to have a separate building. The Freedom of Information Center uh, came out of that 50th anniversary celebration. The money left over was devoted to the FOI. But uh, these trees are still here. Uh, most people never see them, unfortunately. But they are remembrances that we did have a celebration here in 58 and 59. It started in August. We had a big program out here when we introduced the Freedom of Press stamp. Uh, representative from the Postmaster General's office in Washington was here. The first day covers were uh, sold, distributed here. And for the next nine, ten months, we had guest speakers throughout the year. Eleanor Roosevelt was one of those speakers. She came and stayed at the Chancellor's home, which is up near the Jefferson Memorial, we visited. And Eleanor had a hearing problem. When she took off her hearing aid, she did not hear anything. She was on the second floor of the Chancellor's home, and she turned on the hot water to go in and take a bath. She'd taken off her hearing aid, and she never heard the water pouring out. Uh, shortly after that, Mrs. Ellis, the wife of the president, was downstairs, and she looked up and saw water coming through the ceiling. Mrs. Roosevelt had forgot to go in and take her bath and turn off the water. So we had a little incident like that to remember. Those uh, are the events we probably remember better than anything Eleanor might have said. But throughout that year, we had top representatives from all media. Uh, the newspapers, the broadcasting, the magazines, uh, they considered it an honor to be invited to come out here. We did not pay them. These people came on their own. and. Uh, they were just happy to be a part of this institution. Uh, stories like that are what we old timers recall. I always told the students that the School of Journalism provides them the opportunity for a degree. They provide them the opportunity to get the doors open quicker than probably any other school can do. But once they get inside, they're on their own. And it's our objective here to provide the facilities provide the talented professors and instructors so that those students, once they get inside that door, will be able to display their knowledge and move on up the ladder of success in the media world. And this has been true now for nearly 100 years. We now come to Lee Hills uh, Hall. Lee Hills was a longtime executive with the Knight Ritter Group and was a graduate of the School of Journalism. Uh, he gave millions of dollars himself, he and his family, to this uh, school and was honored by the school. And here we have the center of what Walter Williams would recognize should he return today. That is the publication of a daily city newspaper. This was what the basis of the School of Journalism was distinctive uh, in its pioneer days of uh, providing what we now call on-the-job training. And that was Walter Williams' philosophy. He wanted to take these young folk and train them so when they went out, they would know what they were responsible for doing and how to achieve success. We've seen how our prominent alumni have contributed to this school, as have seen the importance of this institution, and have been able to contribute financially for us to continue to succeed as all we alumni uh, think we have done. We're always proud to come back. Thank you.